Welcome back to the hoof care corner. We're going to continue our discussion about the frog and the internal components of the foot. We're going to take a look at the frog in depth now and just uh, see just how it fits in the foot and see what job it really plays. The back part of the frog, which is the buttress, is responsible for proprioceptive function. And that means that the, the proprioceptors are micro nerves that uh, control part of the coordination of the horse. The back part of the frog helps to absorb concussion and it stimulates blood flow and it helps to align the pastern axis. And that's the thing the farriers are struggling with a lot of times with many of these feet that have low heels and long toes. And the buttress is this portion of the frog right here. It's always very prominent, it's calloused, and it's the last part to exfoliate, meaning it's the last part to fall off by itself. And yet it grows back rapidly when it is removed, whether the farrier takes it away or whether it comes off on its own. It grows back extremely fast. And it's been through the latest research that, uh, of Dr. Bowker's that we really begin to understand what this prominent aspect of the frog is all about. These are two other examples of that uh, frog callus that grows in the back part that seek out the ground and want to make some contact. This is another example of a foot that uh, has grown a very uh, substantial portion of frog in the very back part. It's a, it's a wild horse's foot actually and it seems, to, uh, it seems to hold a lot of dirt in the bottom just like all domestic feet do. The thing that we've discovered is, is that this little dimple in the central sulcus is a key uh, landmark that is present at the very back part of the frog. And it's the part that tells us where the most caudal aspect of support is, simply because of the presence of this frog portion back here. And, uh, and it's in its, each foot has its own unique frog design in that central sulcus. Uh, dimple in the central sulcus seems to help us with being uh, aware of where to place the shoe or where to trim the heels and a variety of other things. And those are, in, those are important things to, for farriers or hoof care practitioners to know where to prepare the foot, what portions to keep in place and, and, uh, and simply give us a lot more information about how the, the frog works and uh, how to maintain it. This area of the frog is the portion of the foot that has, that's, has the proprioceptors in it, and there's a larger concentration of those receptors in that very caudal most region. This is uh, research that's just fairly new to the, uh, to the uh, industry uh, via Dr. Bowker in the early 90s, and it was presented it, uh, in 1995, actually. So in light of that, uh, we've answered a lot of questions. We found uh, a good reason why horses prefer to land heel first. All feral horses, uh, wild horses, and uh, domestic uh, uh, sound horses all seem to reach as far as they can to get the heel to the ground first in their normal strides. This answers part of those questions about why horses prefer to do that. Other things that we've discovered with that uh, uh, understanding of the back part of the frog are the two ledges that form on the ground surface of the frog. And they're meant to hold dirt below the level of the frog. And we see this every time we uh, go to investigate a horse's foot. The first thing we do is pick up a hoof pick to go clean the foot simply because the dirt is in there. And it changes our perception of what uh, what that dirt is all about. We've always looked at the dirt as being uh, uh, a non-hygienic or, or a bad thing for the foot, but the fact is the frog itself is designed to hold that dirt in there. And it seems as though those horses that aren't able to hold dirt in or the frog is so narrow or lacks, it's, lacks a good presence in the back part of the foot, those are the feet that end up uh, having a thrush condition or if the environment is just is just urine infested manure, those feet can get thrush and, and oftentimes gives us reason why we think we should clean the foot out. But generally speaking, uh, all horses that have good healthy frogs that never get the dirt removed uh, are those that, uh, that do have a good solid compaction. The dirt we find 
especially in the most arid areas, helps to control the environment deep in the, in the creases of that foot. And it allows the foot to be flexible at those deeper depths. If you clean the foot out and it's not able to hold dirt, then the frog gets narrower and narrower, it dries and atrophies, and the heels then start to come together. This pinches the wings of the coffin bone right here. Every time this hoof capsule gets narrower and narrower, it, it impinges on these solid structures of the foot and eventually will erode them away if this continues for a long period of time. So the dirt could be the missing link to why a lot of horses end up with serious problems. Simply the unavailability of the frog being in contact with the ground. If that isn't possible, the heels are too tall, then dirt generally fills in that space to uh, allow that function to take place. So it's a rethinking some real common sense things about the foot that may give us some insight into solving a lot of our uh, uh, heel sore problems. To add some to this, we, we've, we see this uh, arterial cast that Dr. Pollitt has, uh, has in his book and very, various other books uh, have shown this as well. And if you look at this, uh, all of these arteries in the back here, uh, you'll see that they're concentrated in that very same region of the foot that the dirt is compacted in, where these uh, back part of the frog is, where these little ledges are that help to trap the dirt. So all of the internal, stru the internal structures seem to uh, complement this dirt compaction, or the dirt compaction complements the internal structures and vice versa. It's, uh, the researchers have shown that uh, there's nothing that, uh, that dissipates energy better than fluid in a tube. And a lot of our sh uh, athletic shoe manufacturers have, have tapped into this same concept, simply having air in tubes in the heels of shoes, having fluid, uh, is, is not a brand new idea. Mother Nature seems to be far ahead of us in that respect, simply by the design of the arterial, presence in the back part of the foot, the design of the frog, and the, the need to compact dirt in the back part when it's necessary. And I think that's uh, something that really needs to be looked at. It's no accident that the dirt is in the bottom of the foot. It's there with every foot, and, uh, it's, uh, and, it, and if you look at the forces that are delivered down this leg at that time where the horse is supporting all of his weight on that foot, it's important to have as much mass in the back part to help with that support. And uh, whether the horse is shod or barefooted, proper placement of the shoe is critical. If the shoe's not on the foot, then the frog needs to be as big as it can be. And so in maintenance and husbandry issues, trimming the frog aggressively may not be the best thing there is. Trying to trim the frog away to allow the dirt to clean may not be the best thing for the foot. So these are new, this is a bit of new information that uh, has some common sense uh, about it and it also has a lot of scientific value. So as we learn more and more about the foot as we have in the last five or ten years, we're finding these features to be extremely important to preventing lameness.